Hello and welcome to Dinko Ate My Podcast. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. <laughs> and this week we're discussing uh, a little episode called Smile Time. Yes, with all the fun Smile Time puppetry and uh, children shows of the anus. Yes. Uh, so this episode originally aired February 18th, 2004, attracting approximately 4.15 million viewers. Alrighty, so let us start off with the number one film in America this week, Dave. Any guesses? Quite honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Fifty First Dates hung on from the last week, but nothing else immediately comes to mind that could have topped it. It is Fifty First Dates still on top of the box office. Alrighty, let us move on to the number one song in America this week, Dave. I'm not too sure if it would have hung on from last week from the one you mentioned. Yeah, but again, nothing else is immediately coming to mind song-wise. So you're, you're thinking it's still The Way You Move by Outkast? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Unfortunately, no. Uh, it was actually replaced after just one week by a song called Slow Jams by Twista featuring Kanye West and Jamie Foxx. Yeah, that's also understandable. I don't know what that means, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a case of I don't remember the song, but most likely you play it and it's like, oh, I remember that song. And then I work very good to scrub my brain to get the earworm out of my head. Fair enough. Uh, so for video games, we actually only have one title on our list this week. Hmm. Uh, so on February 24th, if you were a PS2 gamer... You could pick up a game called Romance of the Three Kingdoms 9. Does this ring any bells for you? Only vaguely. I vaguely remember trying to get into the Romance of the Three Kingdoms series, but... Eh. I sent you the... It was kind of one of those particular RPGs that I just did not mesh with. Okay. Um, it... Yeah, um... I don't remember this game, like, at all, but it does sound interesting, like, kind of being set in, like, 2nd and 3rd century China and stuff like that, we kind of, that'd be pretty interesting, maybe, but I've never no, played it's it. definitely interesting, it kind of takes the same sort of idea as Dynasty Warriors, the only, it goes with a bit more of a strategic uh, style gameplay, such as either Fire Emblem or other typical JRPGs, where Dynasty Warriors just went into absolute absurdity. Right, okay. Alrighty, well, uh, let us move on to the episode. Oh, boy, have we got an episode here, Dave. Okay. So we start off with the little boy watching a TV show called Smile Time, featuring puppets singing songs about learning. One of the puppets, Polo, tells the boy to put his hands on the TV. The boy's mother enters the room, horrified to see that the boy has collapsed and is lying catatonic with a, uh, with his face frozen and a smile. It's very, like, Joker toxin. Very much so. Yes. In the science lab at Wolfram and Hart... Uh, Knox brings Fred files on children in Los Angeles who have been hospitalized in the same condition as the little boy. Knox also gives Fred a valentine and tries to get her to discuss their potential relationship, but she gently declines the, his advances. Harmony tells Gunn uh, that he filed the wrong papers with the judge for a particular case. He tries to hide how worried he is about his mistake. Werewolf Nina arrives to spend three nights of the full moon in a cage at the offices of Wolfram and Hart. She flirts with a clueless angel as he leads her to her cell. Uh, and an uncomfortable angel then leaves. He heads to Wesley's office saying he's not sure how he feels about their plutonic friendship uh, turning into something else. Wesley tells him that Nina has been sending him signals, and apparently Angel is the only person in the entire fir firm who hasn't noticed them. When Angel says that he can't pursue a relationship because he'll achieve pure happiness and turn back into Angelus, Wesley says most people have to suffer for acceptable happiness, and there's no reason Angel can't do the same. Also, because Angel's a fucking idiot. Yeah, just a teeny bit. Uh, Fred arrives with the new with a new case. Angel notes that the kids were all watching TV at the same time of day when they became ill, and Lord says Smile Time is on at that time and in the right demographic. Angel heads to Small Time Studio, ignoring a don't sign, 
enters a hidden room with a, where a man with a towel over his head sits under a large egg-like thing. The egg thing opens, uh, forming a glowing smile that fires a beam that tosses Angel across the room. Angel pulls himself up, only now he's a bleeding puppet. <laughs> when Puppet Angel explains to the group what happened, he tells uh, Fred tells the lab to start recording smile time so she can analyze it. Angel orders Lauren and Gunn to talk to the show's creator, uh, Gregor Framkin. At the studio, Nina arrives and Puppet Angel ducks under his desk so she won't see him. Uh, she tries to ask if everything's okay, but he kicks her out. Spike arrives and Spike arrives and is shocked and amused to see Angel is a wee little puppet man. <sighs> ah, Angel pummels a giggling Spike because, well, of course Spike's laughing because it's fucking hilarious. Indeed it is. <laughs> Though, he is the only one laughing. Most everyone else is kind of wondering what the heck is going on with a puppet kicking, a, a kicking Spike's ass. It's true. Uh, Gunn and Lauren meet with Framkin at the studio. Gunn tries to tell him the loss he's violated, but can't come up with the right statue. And Framkin, Framkin says that he thinks uh, he'd be more likely to win than Wolfman Hart in court. After Gunn and Lauren leave, they see Framkin has a hole in... We see... Sorry, we see that Framkin has a hole in his back and is being controlled by Polo. He makes Framkin collapse. Polo summons the other demons. Groofus the dog, Flora, and Ratio Blow... Hornblower with the news that Angel messed with the nest egg. Uh, Fiona suggests that they remove the zombifying spell from some of the employees so that they can uh, see for the uh, future intruders, but Polo announces that their system has now been perfected. They'll drain the life uh, from all of their viewers the next day, instead of one kid at a time, planning to use their souls as currency back down in hell. Framkin begs the puppets to kill him, but they continue torturing him instead. Back at Wolfram and Hart, Nina is preparing for her second werewolf night when Puppet Angel pays her a visit to apologize for the way he treated her earlier. She is shocked to see that he's a puppet and he notes, I made a felt and my nose comes off. Yeah. <sighs> ah. She tells him that uh, he shouldn't care what people think of him since he's a hero. Angel tells her that he's always, uh, always worrying about his past and future. Uh, and future that he doesn't always pay attention to what is happening there and then and is trying to do better only to have failed to notice Nita has already transformed and the wolf grabs Angel and pulls him into the cage. Upstairs, Lauren comes across a tattered Angel puppet and yells, is there a Geppetto in the house? It is the traditional thing. Uh, <laughs> medic, doctor, is there a Geppetto in the house? Oh, so many good jokes. Um... Gunn heads to the medical wing to, wing to see Dr. Sparrow, explaining that he's losing his law knowledge. Sparrow uh, examines him and tells him that the implant is failing due to an acute Flowers for Algernon syndrome. Uh, the senior partners gave it to him originally because they wanted him to have it, and if it's fading, they must have wanted that as well. Gunn says, uh, Gunn says that he doesn't want to go back to the person he was, so Sparrow makes a deal with him. He'll give him a permanent upgrade if Gunn signs something for him. Sign, uh, sign so something for him that is stocking customs. In the science lab, Fred and Wesley agree that they're starting to really like smile time, although that may be because they are sleep deprived. Knox brings yeah. Fred coffee, but she orders him to go home. After he leaves, Fred confesses that she uh, decided Knox wasn't right for her. While the sound is muted, Wesley notices Paulo seems to be talking to the audience. Mm. Puppet Angel is trying to sew himself back up in the office when Wesley and Fred arrive to tell him that the puppet's singing attacks are cloak or singing acts are a cloaking device, allowing Frampkin to address the uh, children directly. Wesley says the nest egg holds the life forces of the kids, so if they can break the magic on it, they'll save the kids and turn Angel human again. Gunn, who's regained his law knowledge, announces the puppets are actually running the show. Uh, Framkin made a deal with the demons to improve his ratings. Elsewhere in Los Angeles, a little girl watches Smile Time and gets a message from uh, Polo, Polo that all the kids in the audience should put their hands on the TV. Puppet Angel and the gang interrupt and the fighting begins. With Gunn decapitating Grufus and subsequently fighting Flora, while Angel goes puppet to puppet with Polo. Fred and Wesley rush to the room with the nest egg where Ratio fights Wesley while Fred uh, reads the spell to break the nest egg, destroying the egg and saving the kids after Wesley defeats Ratio. Uh, in the main studio, Gunn defeats Flora and Angel defeats Polo by throwing him into a treehouse, during which he had tr uh, transformed into a vamp puppet face. 
which is really good. Um, the next day, Nina wakes up in her cage with fabric around her and fears she ate Puppet Angel and tells he, until he tells her that he's okay and will be back to normal in a few days. They agree to have breakfast together with Nina jokingly wondering what puppets eat. In Wesley's office, Fred tells him that she's been trying to subtly indicate her interest in him. She grabs him and kisses him. He happily returns the gesture as the puppets sing their self-esteem, a self-esteem song again. Okay, so that was the episode, Dave. Uh, yes, indeed. Wasn't it nice to have something light and fun? Well, about as light and as fun as you can have as demons stealing kids' souls. Yeah, but it's still a fun episode. It is. It is hilarious and funny with the couple things that they come up with. I also love how like they're they're busting on Angel for not noticing that Nina's into him and like like um uh um uh Wesley saying this and then like he, so he's completely not getting that Fred's like dropping really heavy hints and it's just like God damn it, Wesley, how are you this blind? Well, it is Wesley. He's very good at seeing it for other people, but not himself. This is very true, apparently. Alrighty. So, um, if there's nothing else about this episode, we will go on to some international titles. Uh, So, for international titles, uh, in Czech, it translates as Time of Smiles. In Finnish, Smiles on the lips. In French, the evil puppets. In German, attack of the killer puppets. Uh, In Hungarian, transfiguration. In Italian, the smile time. And there's a bunch of other just like smile time ones that I'm just going to skip because there's no point in reading a whole bunch that are basically the same. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, So... Yeah, um, I hope you like this episode, Dave. Um, uh, definitely interesting. It's kind of interesting either what sort of gave the writers the idea to go ahead with this route of an episode or what was kind of going on at the time to give the idea of this. I can actually answer that question for you. So there's there's two things to this. So one, uh, one of the producers, David Fury, says that... Uh, says that the writers had talked about doing, like, an evil Sesame Street before this season was, like, going to air. Mm. And it also happens that Joss Whedon is uh, the uh, the son of a former writer of uh, for the Muppets. Mm. Yeah. That so that kind of all kind of came together, and, yeah. Good stuff. All righty. So... Um, it it was nice to get this night nice kind of fun episode, wasn't it, Dave? It was. Uh, so next week we're going to be discussing a little episode called "A Hole in the World." Hmm. I'm so, not sure the world is supposed to have a hole in it. So you remember in previous when we did Buffy, I would warn you about certain episodes in advance. Maybe like, yes. maybe like the body or seeing red or episodes that you might want to be a little bit prepared to watch. Mm. You're going to want to be prepared for this one. Joy. I'm going to read you the synopsis and not bring up any spoilers because I don't want to spoil what happens. <laughs> but I-, I will read the first sentence of the synopsis and that should kind of tell you what we're in for. Uh, written and directed by Joss Whedon. Mm. (laughs) Uh, when fred opens an ancient sarcophagus that was anonymously sent to her she is infected by a mysterious parasitic demon called ilaria angel and spike learn that ilaria is an ancient demon who existed before recorded time they must race to return her to an ancient demon burial ground before she kills fred and thousands of other innocent victims boy someone else on the team is going to be hit with a thing Yes, and I'm just going to give one uh, one little piece away here. Um, not everybody's going to make it out alive. Oh, boy. But maybe not in the way you expect. <laughs> yes, thank you for your muha It fills me with much hope. 
As I've said previously, we haven't met all of the major characters yet. Mm. And who knows who could be the next major character. So, until next time, Dave, I've been Paul. And I've been Dave.